Hey, what's up, guys? This is Strange Productions here. Welcome back to another uh, video after you guys in store today. Um, so, like, yeah, these messages. So, we are playing another Mark scenario. This time we're on track 5. And uh, this time for our power, we have an ACS 64. Let me get the pan grab up, though. We're going to operate a uh, Mark Deadhead service. I don't even know why I load people on. <laughs> so, actually, the only styles we're going to make are uh, BWI New Carrollton. This will be one of the uh, afternoon Mark Expresses. So, I that, that would be best. Good. Alright, let's begin. So first I'm going to put on the parking brake. Parking brake is set because of the blue light. I'm going to do a brake test real fast. Make sure the brakes work. <clears throat> Looks like all the brakes are responding pretty good. There goes our air. the needles did there but it looks like the brakes are responding pretty good we'll go ahead and turn off our release sorry not turn off <laughs> we'll release the parking brake parking brakes release and let's go Alright, we have a good running brake test as well. So let me make sure that we actually have a clear path. It looks like we do. So, it looks like we just have a bad signal, so. Let me go through. We do have permission to go through the signal, so. So we're keeping out, keeping an eye out, make sure our switches are all lined up. The map says it's lined up, but sometimes the map is wrong. So we'll make sure we're good, and then watch out for any obstruction, anything fouling the tracks, etc. Watch our signal. And we're only stopping at uh, BWI Airport and New Carrollton. I believe we are crossing over, so we will have a clear signal. Doesn't that work? Alright, cap signals are now active. We're good for 30. Turn 
turn on our high beams. So I guess multi levels have high beams, especially in this modification. All style mods, by the way, are courteous of a Fan Railer on YouTube. Go like and subscribe to his channel. Uh, it definitely has some really good quality videos as well as um, other accessories as well. He does make really good modifications. I've been every time I download one of his mods, I'm always impressed by it. Just the uh, the realism to it. This is the uh, New Jersey Transit um, add-on with the uh, ACS 64. So. Right now we're in the uh, Baltimore Potomac Tunnel or BNP Tunnel, as uh, most call it. We're on track three, heading southbound. And uh, the last interlocking we just went through was Charles interlocking. We went from track five to uh, track three. Now we're coming up here on my post uh, 97. Which is an automatic block signal as well. Hopefully, everybody can hear me a lot better. I know I used my uh, my other webcam microphone, and that was really bad. I apologize for that. So we'll see how this one works. Hopefully, it's working really well. And then this is the automatic block signal right here, as you can tell by the uh, number plate. So I was making adjustments to my microphone. Just we'll see what happens. Ugh. And now this is a uh, Fulton interlocking. A little crossover here before you get to the next interlocking, which is a uh, bridge. We have a clear. Because the lights go up and down. And we are running uh, train type B speeds today. Just so everybody knows. Alright, we're clear for 40. <coughs> right there, we're at mile plus 98. And this is bridge interlocking. As we make our curve into West Baltimore Mark Station. So that's my work.
The stunning sprinter, as I call it. Alright, so we're coming up on Frederick Road, so the speed limit here will turn down or go down to 80. Even though it says 90, that's uh, for train type A. So, train type A defines as tr uh, high speed train sets with uh, tilting mechanisms activated because we are not a high speed train. I mean, we are, but we're not a uh, train set with tilting mechanism. We can only go at a certain speed. So, this is Frederick Road, this bridge overhead. So we were at the first curve north of Frederick Road, and now we're at the first curve south of Frederick Road. And so now we go up to 100. And then this is mile post 100, even though it does not say. So now we can go up to 110 miles an hour. But right where you see that 120 mark, uh, that's the first curve south of mile post 101. So we'll have to go down to uh, 105 miles per hour. <coughs> And then that'll lead us right into Hillthorpe Mark Station, and then we'll be at a interlocking call Winnens, which affects Track One and A. Track A is the one track all the way to the uh, left, and then one on the right from Track A is Track One. So I'm going to maintain 105 now. So this is Mile Post 101 right here, and we're about to enter the first curve south of Mile Post 101. which is right here. Here comes Hail Thorpe in a mile. We're not going to stop you. Honestly, we're not even going to speed it because right where we see the 120, that'll be the uh, curve of winnings. So um, at that curve for train type B, it's 100 miles an hour. So we're going to have to slow down here, anyways. All right, that was the first curve, or that was the curve of winnings, excuse me. So now we're at mile post 104. So now we can even speed up to 110 miles an hour if we so choose, but we're about to slow down here to 90 and then arrive at BWI Airport. If anybody can tell me what creek this is, or a river, or whatever, that'd be nice. I'd like to know what it is. And then you'll see another mile post coming up here on your uh, right. That's mile post 105. So there's a re speed restriction of 90 miles an hour, as you see on the map, between mile post uh, 105 and signal bridge uh, 1055. So there's mile post 105. BWR Airport's coming up in just over a mile. And we're at 88 miles per hour. That is the best uh, reference I could do from Back to the Future. And then there's the, uh, the 1055 signal. So now we're going to start slowing down. As we make our curve into BWI Airport. Which is mile post 106.3. And so I'm planning to arrive at the platform at about uh, 40 miles an hour, maybe 35. Our dynamic brakes are automatically activated. This is mile post 106 right here. So, the first curve south of mile post 106, which is the next curve ahead, will only be allowed to go 90 miles an hour as well. Alright, so we enter a platform around 41 miles an hour, which is pretty good. Luckily, this is a long platform, but I'll need to go all the way to the end, if you know what I mean.
and welcome to BWI. See our cars are right under the uh, canopy here, so I say we did pretty good. Doors are closed. I definitely love what they did BWI report. They even have the new uh, waiting area, so. So unlike the MP36s, you can't just slam the throttles because uh, the MP36s are delayed. They have a delayed effect. So um, unlike those, these locomotives are very uh, touch sensitive and you will wheel slip so you have to ease up on the throttle. As you can see, I'm not even going full throttle yet. And then again, this is the first curve south of Mopos 106. So we can only go 90 miles an hour, but by the time we get to our next uh, speed limit, we won't, we won't even be at 90, so we won't even be around it, so. I'll keep my ditch lights on because I am departing. Because it's daytime, I don't even need my ditch lights. It's just so others can see me. They'll see a bright light, and so the objective is not to walk into the bright light. Alright, this is my post 107. So between my post 107 and all the way to my post 125, which is around Seabrook, or just south of Seabrook, is 125 for both train types A and B. But we do have a few speed restrictions of uh, 120 miles per hour. Uh, Upon a few curves, beginning in milepost 110 through Grove, interlocking, and I'll point Grove out in a minute, and then uh, a couple other curves as well, between milepost 118 and, uh, oh, sorry, 113 and 118, and then right around, uh, I want to say, uh, the second curve of Bowie interlocking, or sorry, the, the curve north of Bowie interlocking, so south of milepost, uh, 120 is a, uh, 115 miles per hour. Apparently, this is a good area to watch trains on the corridor. I've seen many, many videos um, about right here because this bridge, and that signal we just passed, uh, looks very familiar, as well as this uh, curve here, at Milepost 108, which we just passed. But this is my absolute favorite. Uh, route in the entire world. Um, it's definitely home to me, and I know a lot about it. I know I've done a lot of uh, studying, uh, rail fanning. I've done a lot of train rides as well. Um, got here a couple of cab rides a long time ago. So back when everything was not as restrictive as it is now. Alright, so our first curve is coming up, which is Mopos 110. And we'll be at the first curve south of Mopos 110, which is uh, 120 miles per hour for train type uh, B. There's uh, Mopos 110. So for the uh, New Jersey Transit, this the speedometer only goes up to 120 miles per hour. So and right, we're coming up on Grove interlocking. So we will maintain 120 miles per hour. Should be my post uh, 111. I think this is Grove interlocking. As you see from track two, track one, that is a high-speed crossover. You can take it at 80 miles an hour. That's one of uh, three crossovers now that you can take at high speed on CTEC section one. 
which is a uh, dispatching location of where we're on right now. So CTEC 1 begins at uh, CP Avenue down in DC. And then we'll go all the way into Baltimore's Penn Station. We're coming up on Odenton now. A little bit too close. Pretty sure I would have almost nailed him. Alright, there's my post, uh, should be 113. And then all the way to the right, you have the Odenton Amtrak uh, maintenance facility. There's the North Bend Regional. So that's where all your maintenance magic happens over at the CTEC 1 section. And then between Bowie State and uh, Seabrook, we would go 125. So every curve between milepost 113 and 118 is a speed restriction of 120 miles an hour. And actually, you're coming up on one of my favorite curves. Well, my second favorite curve. We already passed my first. Uh, but my second favorite curve, which is right here, it's called the uh, it's called the uh, the mile long split because that last mile plus of the next one is about a mile. And all this is 120 miles an hour. Battling all kinds of grades. past mile plus 118 so that's the end of our speed restrictions we have one more coming up before we get to uh, Seabrook which is just past Bowie State so we can actually give us the power here we go up to 125 and then the second curve after Bowie State which is the first curve south of mile post uh, 120 that was mile post 119 which is passed it's uh, 115 miles per hour Start slowing down to 115. There we go. Alright, that was mile post 120, so now our speed limit is 150 miles an hour. And this signal right here indicates that we are at Bowie Interlocking. We are in Bowie, Maryland. <clears throat> now once we clear this, we can go 125. The tracks that curve all the way to the right is the CSX uh, Polk Creek subdivision. So the CSX does share on the northeast quarter here in CTEC Section 1. Between here at Bowie Interlocking, which runs trains to the Polk Creek subdivision from Landover, Maryland. And Landover will begin the CSX Landover subdivision that goes into Benning Yards, Washington, D.C. Which will connect with the CSX r p subdivision as well as the Capital subdivision on the Alexandria branch. And so now, no more speed restrictions until we're at Seabrook, which we will slow down to 110 miles per hour. And so we can actually go 125. Let's see, our top speedometer, our main one, is not working, so we're going to use this bottom one here. So and I have this little HUD open for you guys, so that way you can uh, see exactly what's coming up. And I'll point out all the different land, uh, landmarks. So we cannot actually go 125 miles per hour, we go 124. 
because uh, Dovetail made uh, 125 uh, an overspeed, which I don't understand why. Now this section of the Northeast Quarter I call Three Mile Land because Seabrook is coming up as you can see in a mile and a half because it looks like you can see forever but you're only seeing about two miles uh, because you can see all the way to that signal bridge we just passed. And so once we come up to the signal we're going to have to slow down to 110 miles per hour. I actually got a picture from Seabrook. I'll have to find it for you guys. But um, all these, uh, there's four trains in one picture. As you can see, there's three tracks. So there's a southbound, those already at the station. There's another southbound following it, which I thought was a cool shot ever. I got it somewhere. If I can find it, um, I'll post it on Instagram or Facebook or something. All right, here is Seabrook, Maryland, mile post 124.4. And at this curve right here, we'll begin the 110 mile an hour uh, restriction. There's mile post 125, so now we are at 110 miles per hour for a regular track speed. So it's not really a restriction, it's, it's more of a uh, train type B track speed. And then New Carrollton's coming up, and the next interlocking is Carroll, which was two of three high speed crossovers, which you could take at 80 miles per hour. At this curve, I'm going to start slowing down here to New Carrollton. Alright, this is Carroll interlocking, and this is where trains will go from track 2 to track 1 and will continue to uh, BWI Airport if they do not take them at Grove. So, this is where Mark will do its uh, changes to go to track 1. And then that high speed crossover we just saw between 2 and 3. Now, there's another crossover coming up, but it's not actually on Train Simulator. I'll have to show you guys because they did not add this. bringing up another car length don't know why the back bell is activated <clears throat> welcome to New Carrollton <coughs> excuse me All right, doors closed, we're good to go. So right here, those trains who are going southbound, passing New Carrollton, which means they're not making a station stop in New Carrollton at all, must perform a running brake test before they get to Landover interlocking. So the, to inform, or to make sure that the brakes actually work. Now, why do they do that? So that way trains to brakes don't work, don't crash into Washington, D.C. Because if the brakes fail, uh, it gives Washington Terminal enough time to prepare and, uh, to stop the train. So that way it doesn't crash into Union Station. Back in, I believe it was 1953, there is a, a Pennsylvania GG1 uh, that was carrying a full train and it went through Landover and it tried to slow down but the brakes failed right at Landover and uh, you know he tried to slow down as much as he could but he couldn't and uh, ended up crashing to Union Station um, problem was the uh, the brakes completely were just they were not working at all Some, something to do with the angle cocks I believe or the uh, brake cutoff valves 
So right here, this is where Hanson Interlocking is, and it's a high-speed crossover to go from track uh, three to two and two to one. Or sorry, two to three and two to one. So this is supposed to make the um, trains who are stopping New Carrollton it's supposed to make all the expresses who are not stopping New Carrollton go around the trains who are stopped at New Carrollton. Uh, essentially, so track one is actually electrified now all the way to Landover Interlocking. So again, this is where Hanson Interlocking is, and now we're arriving at uh, Landover Interlocking. There's no that mark. Hello. So right now we're at a speed restriction of 100 miles an hour, and the two and the track one, which now becomes two separate tracks, is the CSX Landover subdivision. And so that will go all the way to Bending Yards in Washington, D.C. Or, uh, yeah, Washington, D.C. And then it will connect with the CSX Alexandria branch, which is part of the Capital Subdivision. And the CSX R&P Subdivision as well. And so now we have no more speed restrictions until we get close to uh, Washington, D.C. And to the right is the Orange Line Metro which will go into downtown DC and will go actually to Virginia as well and this station coming up for the Orange Line Metro is Chevrolet I thought that'd be cool for you guys And so there'll be a signal box to the right, and that is our little marker that we are in Washington, D.C., or the District of Columbia, right here. So about right here, you're now in Washington, D.C., just left Maryland. That was the state line, and this is the Anacostia River. So now this is where the signals will start to give uh, different aspects to indicate for you to slow down. So this one right here, the cap signals will not register unless there's a train in front of you. So generally, that will be an approach limited. Even though it showed a clear, which that was wrong. And Dovetail, if you're watching this, you guys need to fix uh, track 2. Especially if I'm going all the way to uh, Baltimore. So now we're going to begin the uh, what's called the 95 stretch. Which this whole curve right here is 95 miles per hour. As northbound regional. Alright, so this signal will also be an approach limit as well, even though it is not. Yeah, that's really just a clear. But that now we would start slowing down to 45 miles per hour. So we're acting like we just hit a, an approach limited. And to the right is Amtrak's Ivy City Maintenance Facility, which is completely a ghost town, which is not usually how it is. And the tracks here to the right are the C6 Capital Subdivision, the main Capital Subdivision. And past those signals, which is, these are F Tower, is what it's called, um, will begin the C6 Metropolitan Subdivision. And then this is the Mark Branch to our right, and then to the right as well is the Mark Yard, which will be in the VRE as well. Alright, so now we have an uh, approach medium. So now I'm going to. Oh, if my capsule is cut out. <clears throat> Cap signals will nab me, but it looks like they disabled themselves. So I don't know why. So now, that little crossover just passed in that signal is called CP Avenue, which indicates that we are off the Amtrak Northeast Corridor, and now we are part of the Washington Terminal. And these signals right here, there's this pair of signals here, and then over here should be another pair of signals right there. That's called New York Avenue, because this is what this road is right here, New York Avenue. So that's the 
New York Avenue signals, which indicate that you are no longer on the Northeast Corridor or part of the Capital Subdivision or the Metropolitan Subdivision, because those are the only three areas you can go, or you go right into the Ivy City Yard for VRE, Amtrak, and Mark. So now we're entering Washington, D.C., part of the Washington Terminal. Looks like we have an approach signal. I think that's an approach slow. And that was, that tower was called a C interlocking. So we're gonna turn on a bell because we're entering a yard right now. It looks like we have another approach, and that signal is called uh, H interlocking or H tower. So we'll go and maintain 15 miles per hour all the way in. Yep, that looks like a uh, slow approach to me. I think. So the Washington terminal signals actually act as uh, old B&O signals. Same aspect, same everything. It looks like we have a restricting, we're going to play on track 11, and then this is called J Bridge, or J Interlocking. And then that tower right there is called K Tower. All these next signals that you'll see are part of uh, K Tower. I think you see track 11 right next to that uh, northbound regional getting ready to depart. And now this see these signals are all K Tower. They belong over here to that guy. I mean, all these signals belong to that guy, but you know. Can't reach my lever fast enough. Now we were on, or we are now on track 11. Excuse me. And we have now arrived. Turn our cab lights. Brakes are on handle off. And now we're going to add our parking brake. In the case, oh, I guess the, we're too late. Alright, so I hope you guys enjoy this uh, scenario that we have here on Amtrak's Northeast Quarter operating a southbound Penn Line Express train. Thank you so much for watching. I've got more videos to come up for you guys soon. This is Trench Productions. See you around.